A portrait is a picture of a person. It can be a drawing or a photograph or a painting. A self-portrait means the artist who did the picture is also in the picture. He or she is the subject. So when you draw a picture of yourself, we call that a self-portrait. Let's talk about geometric shapes. We're going to be using geometric shapes in your drawing. Can you name the geometric shapes that you see here? Geometric shapes usually have a name. I see an oval, a square, a rectangle, and do you know the last one? It's called a trapezoid. Some of you knew that. Good for you. We will be using these shapes as we start to make our self-portrait. We also will be using lines. Lines and shapes are two of the elements of art. Lines have special names like curved, spiral, straight, and zigzag. In just a moment, I'm going to guide you step by step on drawing a picture of yourself and will put you in a simple outdoor scene. You're gonna follow along with the video so I suggest that you pause the video after I draw each shape and you draw the same thing on your paper. So it's time to start drawing. Get yourself a piece of paper and hold it the tall direction. We will begin by drawing an oval, which is like an egg shape, at the top of the paper. Inside that oval, we'll draw your eyes, nose, mouth, and add ears to the side. I'm going to add some hair now, but I'll start with short hair in case you're a boy whose hairstyle looks like this. Now I'll go ahead and add a little bit more hair in case you have more hair on your head, you might wanna draw it like this. At this point, I'm going to change the hairstyle into a girl. So you're going to have to pick the hairstyle that best matches you and add that to the top of your head and the sides of your head. To draw the neck, you're going to make a square that touches the oval. Put the square right in the middle of the oval and that will become your neck. Now I'm going to draw a larger square for the shirt. Forget about the sleeves for now and just make a square for the middle of the shirt. Right under your head, notice it's a little bit bigger than your head. I'm putting some short sleeves on, but they have to touch the very top of my square. It's time for that trapezoid that we talked about earlier. A trapezoid shape is the perfect shape for a skirt, but you also can use it to help you form a pair of shorts by adding this triangle in the middle and erasing the space between the legs. When drawing your legs, you're not going to make one line for each leg. You're going to make two, and then you'll color in between the two lines with your skin color. Same thing for the arms. Draw two parallel lines for your arms, and then later we'll be filling in with color. For the feet, I'll add a little sock, and a shoe. There's the sole and the laces. Try to make the one on the other side the same size. That's not easy, but do it in pencil and you can fix your mistakes. Making hands is a little tricky. I start with a thumb that's shorter on the inside near my body and then four longer fingers that are all touching. Now I can add some details like pockets to the shorts, a zipper, maybe a belt, belt loops, perhaps some stripes or designs or shapes on your shirt, and the sleeves, don't forget the sleeves. Now we're ready for a simple background. Draw a line that goes across the page from side to side and pick up the pencil when you get to the legs and continue on the other side. Now I'm putting some balloons in the hand. If you can think of something fun you'd like to add, like a, a dog leash or a parrot on your arm or balloons, you're welcome to take my idea too.
and then this bumpy line behind might be trees or hedges in the distance, and a sun. Make sure the background's always going behind the person and not on top of their legs. Once you've added all the details you would like to add to your picture, you may outline it in a black marker. It doesn't need to be a black Sharpie. Any thin black marker will do. I'm going to speed up my video at this point so you don't have to watch me outline everything in black. If you're having trouble staying on your lines with the black marker, you can always take an eraser when you're done and erase the pencil marks that are showing. Notice I'm not coloring in all the hair with the black marker because you might want to use blonde hair or brown hair, red hair, and it might not look right if you have black marker already there. Don't forget to erase the pencil lines that are still showing when you're done outlining. Okay, now you're ready to color and let's start with the skin. Find any crayons that are close to skin color. I've got a beige, I've got a light brown. Maybe you have to use an orange or a darker brown, but pick your skin color and make sure you do the same skin color in your face, your neck, your arms, and your legs. Because this is a self-portrait, your hair color and eye color need to actually match your hair color and your eye color. So look in a mirror if you're not sure, but color in those with crayon to match you. Your clothes can be colored any way that you like. Maybe pick your favorite colors for the clothes. And notice in the balloons, I'm leaving a little white highlight so they're shinier. I'll use two different greens for my hedges and my grass. And I've got to fill it all in. That takes a long time. Be careful at the edges that you don't color on the table. These first grade students chose to use paint for their background. You can do that too. Please use crayon and marker when doing your self-portrait and then use whatever materials you would like for coloring in your background. Be sure to share your photo with me when you're finished. Have fun!